Hi, g'day, how you going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, your acrylic guru. And today I'm going to paint a lady sitting on the beach with a beautiful sun hat being kissed by the sun, something like that, all right? So I want to get onto my canvas here where the sizes are there right there now for you, all right? And I'll show you the paints we're going to use as well for this. I used arillamide yellow, red gold, Burnt Sienna, Payne's Grey, a skin tone, primary blue, white, and crimson red, and also some clear medium retarder. Down here I have some arillamide yellow with my clear medium retarder, and I want to get those two mixed so as we can get our canvas prepped, all right? Okay, with me canvas I want to wet it my canvas is um a canvas board it's not a stretch canvas and we're doing this in yellow i'm priming this up in yellow not white because i want this to be a those sun colors very orangey yellowy sun colors okay so we'll get all that on there i'll put a bit of water on that see what it's doing it's dragging it's th it's thick i usually prime them up with a white flow paint but this is just my yellow i don't have a yellow flowing paint so we'll get this going with some retarder in it this is ha this has retarder in there so as i can blend and do all sorts of wonderful things now i'm going to have a sun in this painting and it's going to be up high in the sky so it's not going to be a particular color it's going to be mainly white so i want the sun in the middle so i'll get the tones in for the sky first and i'm going with my red gold so i'll grab some red gold with a bit of retarder in there there's my red gold with retarder i'll get it in my brush that i'm going to apply it onto the canvas with i'm just using a two inch one now my son's in the middle so this red gold is going on the outside so i'm going to crisscross around where I want my sun to be, pretty much like that. And we're creating the colors in the water as well. So crisscross it in there. It's a pretty simple way to get these colors going. Now I've got another two inch blending brush, my beautiful lady with a skirt on, and I'm gonna take her dancing. So we go dancing on my canvas board. So let's bring this in bringing that red gold into the yellow so there's a smooth transition and see here we got to blend this as well we can even tap that if we want just to get rid of those ugly brush marks and we've got a nice soft colors of the two meeting i'll do it like this it's better all right that's blended to the middle yellow section there now i'm just grabbing a fan brush and some more red gold without retarder just to darken up the corners so i'll put a a bit in here from the corner and i like to spear it inwards towards the middle of the painting just like that so when i'm blending it's not just a a boring blob in the corner it's sort of an artistic shape coming into the middle of the painting just a bit darker like that All right, and maybe a bit more on the other side as well. Putting it on, stamping it on type of thing and blending these edges out to those other colors nice and soft so they're merging beautifully and they look good on the eye. All right, now we've gone this far. I want to put the elements of the sun in the middle of the sky. So I'm going to use my pouncer and my white paint now the white paint is a good structured quality white paint so what i'm going to do i'll just give my pouncer a bit of a damp get some water there and because you want this to get right into the pouncer push it in you don't want big lumps and globs on it where are we you don't want big lumps and blobs on it like that you want it just nicely into the pouncer see how there's broken up there you want it a bit wet work it out the temperament of the paint in the pouncer so when you do it again 
on the board you'll get a bit more solidness now I'm gonna have my girl about here so I don't want her blocking up the Sun that's why I've got the Sun in the middle so we'll go about here get it on there I'll get that a bit wet there we go I've got it on there all this is still wet that yellow and everything and then we're gonna come and dance this around until we start fading away with our paint just like that go a bit bigger I wanted a quite a big glare now see we're starting to stamp the edge of the pouncer in there well don't worry about that you don't want to do that so as I'm coming over here now I'm sort of getting rid of that but keeping the fading elements happening on the same gradient I'm grabbing my blending brush and I want to fade the edge into the yellow now just like this nice and easy it's picking up some of the golds there as well different darkness in the sky wipe your brush see I could be transferring white into there and you don't want to do that you got to watch what you're doing and keep an eye on everything because there's a science behind painting well there's a science within paint and if you learn about it you cannot get tripped up by it but if you're not it can trip you up so that's fading out now I want to intensify it a bit more so I'm gonna grab some more white paint on my pouncer because I want this intensified a lot more than what it is oh look at that beautiful you probably can't pick it up on the camera and I'm gonna come around again and get that out some more if it was all right I would have left it but I can see it was a bit thin I want it a bit more stronger so use your pouncer carefully not trying to make too many stamp marks from the edge of the pouncer and come out so it's fading and the more you can get that looking like that it'll just look a lot more elegant down here I've got some burnt sienna on my fan brush we're just going to create some darkness for some clouds now everything's still wet from the retarder I don't want to come over here I'm gonna have my girl here I'll put something about here let's hope we can still get this blended I'll just put a bit on like that and I'll come and blend this into the sky there all all the route surrounding edges because I'm gonna put white over this to create the actual cloud this is just giving it some shadow and darkness I suppose now I've cleaned that brush and I'm picking up some beautiful titanium white chiseling it on both sides of my fan brush and that there we want to the top of our cloud we want to keep and that color there is going to make up the shadow in it the dark colors in it can come across there a bit now I'm going to blend that down all right so we've virtually got our blending brush twisting it and then we're going to go for it hit the cloud and start I'm very softly touching this very softly where I'm in the middle section very softly and then down here I can probably get a bit hard I've got to try and pick up some of that burnt sienna to bring in the shadow which there it is there coming through now see the the brown that's coming through that's what I wanted to happen so I'll, I'll twist that a bit more there blend it come across that Sun a bit now if you want to be an acrylic we don't brush it up like the oil guys do so we're just gonna sometimes just tickle the top of it there we go and to give this cloud some second dimensions is we just put a bit more in front of this shadowed area alrighty let's put something in front of there just to to break it up a bit keeping these white there we go that'll do me don't overdo it sometimes I get carried away with clouds and I can muck them up You've probably seen me muck a few up thinking oh he's over blended it okay there we go we've just got that tickled in there we've 
got a second dimension to those clouds there. I've added some more on the other side and just because I'm going to have a tree here I want something just down here so we'll put those little long ones I normally put down the bottom of a painting just like that coming across there give it a bit of thickness just dance that across like that and we'll just carefully blend the bottom of that cloud down into the atmosphere and that's pretty much it for that you can put another one in front of it or just leave that but I want something here to break up so I've got something behind the tree in the painting itself. Wipe your brush so you can really, you don't want to blend it and stop it like that. You've got to virtually build it into your painting, blend it down and think and blend and look and see how things are in your mind. And There we go down to the atmosphere. Getting that burnt sienna again on this very strong, more of a directional brush and I'll get the horizon line in somewhere about here. Just keep it reasonably straight. You can mask this up or do it freehand. I've just done it freehand for now. Get that edge nice and sharp. That's it. Then you can start bringing this down, bringing some water down. It looks a bit dark for water, but don't worry about that because we're going to do something to make it look like an artistic piece of artwork. I'll get all that blended the way I want it to a degree. All right, now we're gonna grab our fan brush and some of that titanium white on the fan brush. We've got our sun there. Get all that something there. So we've got the basis of our glare. I'm wiping that brush as well. We've got the basis of our glare there. All right. Now I've got some more titanium white on my fan brush. And my sun's here. So we'll get some of that. I'm stamping it on. So I'm not blending it already as I'm putting it on. I want to blend it after I put it on. So we're getting that stamped to where I want it. Maybe a bit over here, just for some of the cloud's sake. And now we're going to blend that. Okay, was that easy? I want to just get some white out in the distance there on the horizon line with my knife. Very thin, the thinner the better. Just out there. And we can intensify that coming down towards as a in our glare here as well just stagger these lines somewhere out there just like that okay everything's coming along okay now i just want to put some of the foreground on here so we could virtually got a platform to put the girl on there now the foreground is going to be quite simple not too high up probably somewhere there keeping it pretty parallel with the painting just something like that brush it in there with a flat brush I'm using so I'll get that in there now we've got that on there it's still damp and we're going to pick up some burnt sienna without washing the brush just chisel that onto there like that and we'll get some darker moments into this foreground as well just like that you can wipe the brush on a rag on a towel and horizontally blend them in as well a bit and get some white in there as well mainly on the the front edge where the light will be hitting it 
Now I'm going to grab another brush to blend that. I'm going to drag that white into that yellow oxide and burnt sienna. Okay, I've dried that. This is the point where if you want to detail your foreground now, you can do that now. I'm quite happy to leave mine the way it is. And now I'm going to draw an outline of the girl, incorporate that to the painting with the appropriate colours. Now we have the girl traced onto the painting there. It's up to you how provocative and sexy you want it to look. I'm just keeping this one quite low key. Now I want you to come in and I'm going to show you all the colours I have on my small palette to get the girl and her bikini, her hat and her hair all coloured in onto the painting, alright? Come on. Get over here. Come on. Just get over here and have a look. Now down here I've got the touch of dioxine purple and I've got my skin tone but I've got it in three different piles so I can put the white in it for different shades and tones and I've got primary blue or prime blue and I've got some white ready to tone that down as well to bring it brighter and lighter and I've got the smallest bit of burnt sienna as well for her hair colour. <laughs> Now first off, this will be the skin tone. So I'm going to grab some white, because that's too pink. And I'm going to lighten that up. So we'll block in her skin. And then I can um, tone this, shade it to the lighter and dark appropriate colours. But this is a nice pinky sort of skin tone it'll do me so get yourself a nice flathead brush or a tapered flathead brush so you got control of where you're putting this paint and doing a little figure like this sometimes you might have to give it a couple of coats depending on how good your paint is try and use a good quality paint for your paintings if you find you're getting good with your work but if you're just practicing stuff just for an idea you can use anything but don't practice with anything if you're trying to get a result you need to know what that paint's going to react like when you're practicing whether it's clouds blending or something to that effect okay okay the skin colors done with the toned down color now I'm using the skin color without any white and I want to put some darker tones in her skin now so we'll work out where they're gonna go just put it on. Now getting some white, just putting some bits of, oh yeah. See what happens when you've got crap on your brush. Put some glare on her arms and the rest of her skin. Now I'm getting the burnt sienna on the uh, little brush and I want to get these little defined lines just where it's overlapping the body only. Her nose and lips need a bit of attention. So we're going to put a little nostril there and maybe the thinnest line just down there just to define her nose. I want to put just a little bit of um, red lipstick on her here just to give her some definition of feminine beauty with red lipstick and then what I'll do is I'll get the tiniest little bit of white and I just want to give those lips a little bit of tweaking like there you go, love. No worries. See you when I get home. Yeah. 
Okay, we'll put some bikini on her so she's not feeling a bit vulnerable. So I'm just using the primary the primary blue for her bikini top. I should have just painted her all in first in the skin colour because that would have acted like a primer. This will be alright, we'll get there. Because I want to tone them down a bit. Getting onto her brown hair, and then we can scratch a bit of white in it to highlight it if we so want to. We'll put her sunglasses on. And we can fill the inside of them up with a bit of reflection later. But at the moment, we'll just paint all that in white. So as it's like a primer. You're best off underpainting everything white so all these colours don't look translucent. Here we go up there. Finicky little stuff, but it's worth it at the end. They look quite different these little figures inside these paintings now I'm going to fill the inside of the glasses with blue just like that the bottom bit paint it in nice and lightly and on this side because even the reflection in these glasses I want to make a two-tone not just one boring easy color Okay, and that's why I've got that darker dioxine on my palette, just so as I can use that to break up the reflection inside these glasses. That's it, nice, and it's given us that colour that I'm after. Okay, just getting the shades of blue now. I want to finish her off with her hat. So the hat's going to overcut a lot of things. Get the edges nice and sharp. That's important. You bugger them up, you might as well throw your painting in the bloody bin. No, I'm only joking. But take time. You don't have to work as fast as I have to. Take time. Just to keep the girl from floating on the foreground there, I'm grabbing some of the darker colour and I want to blend in some depth underneath her just so it sits her down onto that foreground there because it is a bit floating. Just like that. Right, I've finished the girl. I'm pretty much finished playing with that. Now I just want to put a hint of a palm tree on this side to break, to break it up. And then we can sign it and frame it. Alright, what's the best way to do a simple, easy palm tree? Well, grab yourself a flat, square-headed brush. I don't know what they're called. They're a flat-headed brush. And come down here and I'll just show you. Simply grab some Payne's Grey. I've sprayed some water there because you want this paint to move. Now you, we don't want it too wet, okay? Just enough to glide off the brush and not leave broken edges. And I'm sort of, my, my palm's about here somewhere, so, and it's going to stop about there. So the sun's there. I don't want to kill it too much with our foliage. So my palm is 
and he's coming fatter down and he's in hindsight down here somewhere so now there's me me trunk let's get the edges nice and sharp okay now with the the leaves I've shown you before I'm going to show you again in this one just sort of come up boom get them down like so do another one and we'll put a few of these all over there get one over there boom all right that's a simple easy palm okay just for beginners you can get more detail with them than when you get the more of grasp of the concept now we'll just sign this here Okay, that's our autograph. Let's put a frame on this, see how she looks. <clears throat> yeah, that doesn't look too shabby. Okay, hope you like that little exercise. We'll call that sun kissed, being kissed by the sun. I've got some shirts for sale. You might have noticed in the background. Private message me for those on Facebook. Search me on Facebook for Ianapolis and you'll find me, okay? All the best. Goodbye, good luck. And good on ya.